Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. We made it to Wednesday. It is November 8th. And it's about 70 degrees out of San Antonio International, so almost a shorts and flip flops kind of day, but I dare people to try that tomorrow, Justin Horn. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that would not be a good day. Happy cold front eve to you. Uh, yes, cold front tomorrow. That means big changes for you. We're going to get rain. We're going to get colder weather. We're going to get gusty winds. All those things arrive by midday tomorrow. In the meantime, it is still warm and we've got some fog to contend with. I want to point that out. If you're watching us from down in Eagle Pass, uh, down towards Carrizo Springs, we have dealt with some fog. It is improving. Most visibilities are improving with the exception being Eagle Pass, where it's still down to three quarters of a mile here around San Antonio. Fog is not a problem, but we see the satellite picture here. There's still lots of clouds. It'll take some time for these clouds to go away. Once they do, the sun pops out and we make our way into the 80s tomorrow. Of course, or today, I should say. But the big story is what arrives tomorrow, and that is the cold front. Here's a look at the arrival times. We think it'll be here tomorrow morning in the Hill Country by midday here in San Antonio and then uh, down along the coast 1 to 3 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Winds gusting at 30 miles per hour. The cool down will go from the mid 70s to the low 60s in a good dose of rain by late in the day and then especially into tomorrow night. 70% chance of rain. We're going to talk more about this front and also an additional chance of rain coming up later in the weekend here in just a few minutes. But looks like we've got some flashing lights out there on the roads. What's going on, RJ? Yeah, Justin, it's been a uh, very busy morning for our drivers there in the northeast and east side, and that's exactly what we're seeing right here. As you take a look at TransGuide traffic cameras, Loop 410 northbound at East Houston. So it's basically going to be around the uh, Sam Houston High School area if you're kind of looking at it from that perspective. We do have a backup here. There's a reported crash. Uh, TechSouth's reporting this right now. Um, uh, not sure how many vehicles you could see. We have flashing lights there and the hero vehicle, the truck out there as well. As we take a look at a map, see how uh, we're looking at a traffic flow here. You can see that traffic has been de delayed significantly. Northbound lanes at East Houston Street all the way past uh, 87, that interchange there between uh, 410 and 87, all the way over to Sinclair Street. So again, the Sam Houston uh, High School area. Let's take you to the west side now. And uh, we have a stalled vehicle westbound at 151 at Callahan Road. Now, fortunately, does not appear to be causing any major traffic delays in this area. One more look here at a citywide map. You can see that traffic for the most part, with the exception of our crash here on 410 East Houston, is moving along pretty smoothly. We do have a uh, you know, normal buildup there on the north side there by I-10 and 1604. But again, for the most part, things looking pretty good as we take one more shot there. Give you one more look at the rest of the city, 37 Jones Avenue. Traffic moving smooth there and 37 Fair Avenue on the southeast side. We have drivers moving along pretty well in that area as well. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, sir. Let's look at today's nine at nine. The push for a pause in the fighting in the Middle East is growing. President Biden has confirmed he requested a pause this week as new details emerge about a potential plan to secure the release of more hostages being held by Hamas. In the meantime, in a rare move on Capitol Hill, the House voted to censure Democratic Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who expressed anti-Israeli views. A censure does not hold power beyond a public condemnation of the member's behavior and does not deny them any privileges in Congress or expel them. Almost all of the constitutional amendments passed during yesterday's election, except for Proposition 13, which would have increased the mandatory retirement age for state judges. Texans approved the other amendments dealing with property taxes, state parks, farming and ranching, teacher retirement, and more. To see all the election results from yesterday, just head over to our website at KSET.com. For the first time in the Texas legislature's 176 year history, a fourth special session has been called after lawmakers did not complete Governor Greg Abbott's special agenda in the allotted time. Abbott is yet again pushing forward legislation to establish a school voucher like program and increase border security. Lawmakers are expected to convene again this afternoon. Ivanka Trump is testifying today in her father's civil fraud trial as the final witness for the New York Attorney General's office. While she is no longer a defendant in the case, she is still likely to be pressed about her role securing financing for properties when she worked at the Trump Organization, as well as the valuation of an apartment she leased in one of her father's Manhattan buildings. Her testimony comes after former President Donald Trump's testimony on Monday in which he badgered the judge and the attorney general with political attacks. 
Nine days and counting. That's how long Congress has to prevent a potential government shutdown. And so far, House Republicans don't have a concrete plan to keep things running. Speaker Mike Johnson and GOP lawmakers went through a series of ideas yesterday, including a short-term spending bill through January 19th. But if some Republicans in the House are against any sort of short-term spending bill, Johnson would need Democratic support, and that might be an uphill battle. New research shows that this is the least affordable housing market since 1984 when Ronald Reagan was president. The report from the Intercontinental Exchange shows that more of a person's household income goes toward paying a mortgage than in recent years. High interest rates and the high cost for housing are to blame. The trend over the past 35 years was that housing would cost about 25% of a family's income and now stands at nearly 41%. United Airlines is bracing for a record-breaking Thanksgiving travel period. They're the first of the major U.S. airlines to release its forecast for the upcoming holiday season. The airline says it'll carry more passengers this Thanksgiving holiday than ever before and predicts the travel period to be longer than ever this year, too, spread over 11 days. United expects the Sunday after Thanksgiving to be busiest. Waze is helping drivers avoid crash-prone areas. The Maps app is now offering crash history alerts. The notifications are based on reports from Waze users and AI analysis. Just in time for Black Friday, Google has new ways for shoppers to find deals. The additions include a deals destination page on the main search platform. There are also new shopping features for Chrome, including the latest deals and discounts on previously searched items. And that is today's Nine at Nine. Any more headlines, a unique robbery to tell you about. And the pandas are departing. How pandas could be an indicator for our political relationship with the world's second largest economy. We will explain what that means. That's right. Max Massey joins us live in the studio right over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, there, there we go. With your morning headline. Max, yeah. where are we starting? Let's talk about some election results. Today. Uh, I wanted to talk about the pandas. The as pandas. The indicators yeah. I know us, somebody but... from out east that made a special mm. trip just to see the pandas oh. before they left the National Zoo earlier this fall. I'll steal my thunder here, Mark. Mm -hmm. well, we're going to talk about that and our relationship in China, but we're going to stay with actual democracy for a second. Well, off-year elections are always carefully watched as potential indicators like the pandas for the next big races, integral races from governor, constitutional amendments to major city mayors. Voters in at least 37 different states took to the polls for election day yesterday, and the big takeaway? Abortion access remains a top issue for voters around the country. Ohio enshrining abortion protections in their state constitution. The state becoming the seventh to protect abortion access through the ballot box since, remember, the Supreme Court struck down Roe v. Wade last year. A unifying theme around abortion rights and the way that voters are reacting to it and responding to it that continue, continues to reflect badly on the Republican Party. Doctors will now be able to provide abortion care, contraception care, miscarriage managed, in vitro fertilization, all of that, because now it's in our Constitution. So another state where abortion access played a big factor in the polls, Virginia. Democrats won control of both the legislative chambers, flipping the House of Delegates and maintaining control of the state Senate. Headed to Kentucky, Democratic Governor Andy Beshear won re-election while attacking his state's no exemptions to abortion access, calling it extreme. All right, now to really the story I've just been infatuated with, and I didn't realize there was this much pandemonium. See what it did there? So this is all in Washington. Thank you for the sympathy laugh, guys. It's a bittersweet goodbye at the National Zoo. Bye-bye. Some beloved animals, they're headed home. Home for them is China. So this morning, fans of the beloved giant pandas of the National Zoo saying goodbye as the animals prepare to head back to China this morning. The Chinese pandas arrived at the National Zoo back in 2000. They're only supposed to be on loan from China for 10 years, but that agreement, it was renewed three different times. And in 2020, they had a baby boy. Efforts to renew this agreement, they failed. Experts say, and this is where the indication comes in, it is a sign of worsening relations between the United States and China. I am really sad because I know these animals as individuals, but when I think about what we're doing for a whole species, it makes the hurt a little bit less. Only four pandas remain in the United States. Those are at the Atlanta Zoo. Their agreement with China expires next year. As for our United States-Chinese political relationship, President Biden and the Chinese president set to meet at an economic summit in San Francisco just next week.
All right, this is crazy video. This is Oakland, California. A backhoe was used to break into this convenience store. Take a look. The heavy machinery breaking through what was supposed to be bulletproof glass. The thieves targeting an ATM inside. All that effort though, look at this. They're in there. They didn't get away with any cash. The store's owner says there were still tens of thousands of dollars left in damages. Our surveillance video showing the crash through this bulletproof glass. There's a store west at Grand Avenue in Oakland. It's happening on Monday. And you see a truck eventually pulling in. They wanted to use the chain from the truck to pull out the ATM. You see multiple masked men. They try to put the chain around the ATM, and this is when they realized they had the wrong measurements. The chain was not long enough. So what did they do? They just took off. So they cost tens of thousands of dollars. They didn't get, oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> They didn't get any cash, and really, you just feel so bad for the small business owner because this is a small corner store, and now they're stuck. They got no protection. They have a crazy situation. It's all caught on camera, and insurance is really only going to cover a portion of this. But this is, I mean, multiple, look at that. I can't watch it enough because the levels that people are going to just to try to get into an ATM is mind-boggling. I thought you were going to say something like they use the metric system instead of... <laughs> and that's how they misjudge the distance. I think California is another country, but I don't know if they use a different metric system. <laughs> another Max hot take. Thanks, Thank, guys. thank you, Max. Thanks. Appreciate it. 909, 70 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. A lot of us may deal with sinus problems. So coming up later in the show, we're going to speak with a health expert about what to do when you're feeling stuffed up and what to avoid to improve your sinus issues. We usually wait till April to talk about the Poteet Strawberry Festival, but farmers are starting to... Now, grow the fresh crop of fruit. Sarah Costa visited with some of those farmers about the importance of continuing to grow strawberries for the community year after year. And let's look out there with live cam right now. It's pretty nice, 70 degrees. It's going to warm up today, but get those jackets ready. Tomorrow, things will change. We'll be right back. 913, the community of Poteet, Texas, has been growing strawberries since 1948. It started as a way to encourage our soldiers to come back home after World War II. Well, even the Poteet Strawberry Festival isn't until April. The local farmers have already started planning for it. In this week's edition of Gardening with KSAT, Sarah Costa visited a farm in Poteet as they planted strawberries for the upcoming season and learned about the importance of those strawberries for that community. I love strawberries, even though I'm mildly allergic to them. Pat West Jr. and Joanna Garcia of Sotex Farms in Poteet put a lot of love and care into planting their strawberries. I'll eat them until I get a rash. Uh, but growing up in Poteet, there's a lot of pride for it. My grandfather was actually one of the people who started the Strawberry Festival back in 1948 as a way to bring soldiers back from World War II to have pride in their town. And now I'm here carrying on the legacy. That festival, a tradition that still goes on today, attracting over 100,000 people. It's the economic pulse for this small town. It's really an economic boom for this for the county and the city. Uh, not to mention, I didn't mention a while ago, but we, during the Strawberry Festival, we have a lot of civic organizations that have booths in the Strawberry Festival grounds, churches, uh, nonprofits, all kinds of, of groups like that, and that is their main fundraiser for the year. The money also going back to the strawberry growers in Protee that compete and then auction off their produce. A lot of the money goes back to the growers, those who, the grand champions and all the different places, and we also uh, keep some of the money for scholarships uh, for, for the local students. Planting looks a little different here in Poteet compared to where most of the country's strawberries come from, Northern California. We get a little bit more sun earlier than everybody else, so we actually plant in October, sometimes September, all the way through November, and our berries come in about mid-February and stay through about the first week of June. This is what the plants look like when we get them. We cut off a couple of inches of this root, we poke holes, put them in the ground, and we let them grow, and once they're in the ground, we'll pretty much hands off until the harvest season comes. So here at Sotex Farms, they've made over 13,000 feet of rows, and over the next two weeks, 30 to 40 people are gonna help them plant 33,000 strawberries and they have had a lot of success at the festival since 2018 but we got reserve grand champion two years ago in our in our fourth year of growing um, we've gotten first place miscellaneous two years in a row now 
she talks to all the plants <laughs> and I really do think it's because we grow on clay. The clay is, you know, it has a lot more natural nutrients in it. I think our berries just taste sweeter because of it. And we'll get a taste test come this April. Happy farming in Poteet. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Well, it kind of feels like it does in April right now, but bit. it won't. <laughs> a little bit. No, it won't. Uh, we've got a front on the way. That's the big story tomorrow. It's going to bring changes. We want to make sure everyone's aware so you dress appropriately tomorrow. Yeah. It's one of those days where you may not know it in the morning, but you will feel it by the afternoon. Let's go on start for you right now, though. We've got to talk about the fog and check that out. A few uh, droplets there on the live cam, so there is a little bit of drizzle. And keep in mind, this is up high. So we haven't seen a whole lot of that at the surface, but uh, a little bit. 70 in San Antonio, 72 in New Braunfels, 70 in Seguin, 66, Bernie, 68 right now in Kerrville. And here's a look at the satellite picture where we've seen the fog is down around Eagle Pass this morning, but we're starting to see visibilities lift. So it's getting a little bit better. The clouds kind of tried to bank up against the escarpment this morning. And so we have a good deck of low clouds stretching down I-35 through San Antonio. It's going to take some time for these clouds to burn off, but they will. And we'll get some sun this afternoon. It'll be another warm, humid day. We'll make it up into the low 80s, 84 degrees by 4 o'clock, 83, 5 p.m. And then clouds tonight, uh, filling back in. And then tomorrow, again, is the day. Let's walk you through the forecast here. Uh, so let's fast forward to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Cloudy. Maybe a couple sprinkly showers, but the bulk of the action is going to be up to our north and west to start your Thursday. By midday, here comes the front. I think it's moving through between 10 and uh, midday, noontime here in San Antonio. Right along the front, we should get a broken line of showers, maybe a couple of thunderstorms. Then it turns windy. Still most of the shower activities in the home country, but by Thursday night, it starts to move closer to San Antonio. And then we got some playoff football games Thursday night. We've got to watch the weather very closely. There could be some lightning involved with some of these showers and storms. And this continues right on in through uh, late Thursday night into early, early Friday morning. And then by 7 a.m. Friday, a lot of the action starting to push east. And I think we'll see rain pretty much go away by mid-morning on Friday. But we've got a prolonged period here where we'll get some pretty good rain chances. And here's a look at the rain chances tomorrow. So we start off at 20 percent. It builds. And so by four and five, uh, four, five, six o'clock, we've got a 60% chance of rain. That could also affect tomorrow evening's commute. Just another thing to keep in mind. And I mentioned the winds by, say, three o'clock tomorrow. Once the fronts pass through, we've got gusts out of the north, anywhere from 30 to maybe even 35 miles per hour. So it's going to be pretty windy all the way into Thursday night, along with the rain and those cooler temperatures. And speaking of the numbers, Tomorrow, we see temperatures build around 74 midday, and then they fall off behind the front. We're in the low 60s by the evening hours, so that's that change where you'll want your coat uh, by tomorrow evening. You may not need it in the morning, but you'll want it late in the day. Down the line, uh, we'll get uh, some more rain chances, it looks like, kicking in as we head into uh, Sunday into Monday. And then when you add it all together, we're talking the rainfall potential through Tuesday here. The greatest numbers will be down along the coast where we could three, see three inches plus around San Antonio. Again, this incorporates the potential for rain Sunday into Monday. We could be looking at one to two inches in San Antonio and some, even some decent numbers out west. So this is all good. I, I think we're going to like the way this forecast shapes up. But I will tell you, once that front moves through, we're going to have a stretch here of pretty cloudy, cool weather. So 60% chance tomorrow afternoon, 70% chance Thursday night, 40% chance Friday morning. And then look for a 20% chance on Veterans Day. We'll see the rain kick back in. 40% chance Sunday, 60% chance Monday. Mainly light rain, but with all the cloud cover and that chance for rain, really does keep temperatures down in the low 60s. So again, cool, cloudy stretch ahead and hopefully some generous rainfall. So not much going on in the forecast overall. No, no, not at all. It's very quiet. <laughs> cool. Thanks yeah. very much, Justin. 920, <laughs> 70 degrees. And still to come on GMSA at 9. Some interesting stories this morning. Walmart is making some changes to take care of customers with sensory disabilities. And if you have any $2 bills stashed away somewhere, you're going to want to see what they're worth now. But before we get to that, San Antonio police trying to put an end to a recent uptick in vehicle burglaries in a Northside community. We have a lot of information coming in and we don't have cases attached to a lot of this information. It's good information. The, the citizens are doing a great job of getting the information out there, but, but we're having to sort through a lot of info. We will explain how you can better help police after the break.
San Antonio police are looking for a group of teens accused of vandalizing and breaking into vehicles in a Northside community. Police are working around the clock to keep up with the increase in property and auto theft crimes around the city. And they tell our Patty Santos what kind of help they need from the public. San Antonio police are inching closer to catching these teens caught on camera vandalizing Tay Garcia's property. But this is crime that happens every single day in every neighborhood. It's Police are actively looking for three to four teens in connection with several vehicle break-ins, thefts, and property crimes in the 78230 area on the north side of town. We walked warrants on uh, one and we're still working on the others. With the increase in these types of property crimes across the city, Detective Rudy Salgado says it's taking longer than usual to build cases. Here's how to help police make strong cases. If a crime's committed, report it to police. If there's video surveillance of the suspects, include those images along with the case number and hand it over to detectives. So we have a lot of information coming in and we don't have cases attached to a lot of this information. It's good information. The, the citizens are doing a great job. Sagalda also warns many of the suspects behind the vehicle thefts across the city are armed. Don't confront these guys. These guys don't care. They're dangerous. He didn't hesitate to raise his arm up and, and fire shots. There was no hesitation. We spoke with Andrew, who lives in the 78254 zip code in northwest San Antonio. He says he surprised potential thieves who fired three shots towards him, one of which landed on his garage wall. I feel like we're prisoners in our own home. Like we can't come out because, oh, they're going to shoot us. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. The detectives Patty talked with say they're doing the paperwork for cases, but they're also doing street surveillance in plain clothes as well. The San Antonio Police Department is also counting on help from the potential additions of more than 150 officers over the next year, thanks to the city budget and a federal grant. 926, 70 degrees. More ahead on GMSA at 9. When we come back, we're going to be speaking with a health editor from Consumer Reports about what to do when you're feeling stuffed up and what to avoid to improve your sinus problems. Plus, it is, if you can believe it, time for the high school football playoffs. Max will be back and look at our game of the week, and we'll hear from both teams. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. This is the time of year where cold or flu can have you feeling a little stuffed up, but so can allergies. So experts are weighing in on what to do to improve your sinus problems. So joining us this morning is Catherine Roberts, an associate health editor for Consumer Reports. Hey, good morning, Catherine. Good morning. Well, thank you for joining us. So what do experts recommend if your sinus troubles are allergy related? Yeah, um, I mean, it's very, very likely that <laughs> you might be having allergies. About a third of adults are estimated to have some kind of seasonal allergy. Um, and a good, like, really simple solution, um, over-the-counter saline nasal drops or saline rinses are a really good option. Um, and then, again, over-the-counter antihistamine nasal sprays. Um, an example is a Zelestine that's uh, sold as Astelin or Astapro. Um, that's a good, a good place to start for allergies. That's a really good one. So, Catherine, what if your sinus issues are flu or virus related? So um, again, those over-the-counter saline nasal drops or rinses are also really great for, um, you know, symptoms that are viral, um, uh, infectious disease related. Um, and then for, you know, for, for those kinds of things, flu, cold, um, an OTC steroid nasal spray um, like fluticasone, you might know that as Flonase or triamcinolone, which is nasocort. Um, those are good, you know, over-the-counter type options. Um, something that you want to avoid though with these cold and flu symptoms, um, we, we always warn against um, using OTC nasal decongestant sprays. So not those steroid nasal sprays, which are good, but um, the decongestant sprays, um, you might see this as like Afrin. Um, they can provide some relief, but if you use them for more than like three days, um, you raise this risk of sort of rebound congestion, which you really don't want to get. So, um, you know, a day or two at a time, those nasal de decongestant sprays can be helpful, but I wouldn't use them for, for more than a couple days at a time. All right. And what if you're already at a point where you've ruled out allergies and a cold? What are some other common culprits? Sure. So um, a lot of people experience what 
doctors call non-allergic rhinitis. Um, and that can be caused by a lot of different things. So irritants, pollution, cigarette smoke, fireplace smoke, traffic fumes, even strong odors and weather changes. These can all, all cause sinus troubles. Um, it's, it's, you know, it has to do with the nerves in your nose that make mucus basically. Um, so, you know, a good thing to do is if you can figure out what your trigger is, try to avoid it. That's not always possible, you know, to figure it out. If you can rule, you know, rule out <laughs> a few things, that's good. Um, then again, those saline nasal rinses and sprays are good for this kind of thing as well. Um, if you've got a stuffy nose, that's kind of your primary thing. Again, the antihistamine nasal sprays are often quite effective. Um, and then, you know, if you're, if kind of runny nose is more of your problem, you can start to get into some prescription medications, um, that can help. So, you know, if, if, if your, your problems are like ongoing, you know, not really resolving, it, it is always a good idea to get checked out by a doctor, especially an ear, nose and throat doctor, um, who can kind of examine the inside of your nasal passage passages and find out if there's other stuff going on, like nasal polyps. Um, you know, those are benign growths um, that can be, you know, can be managed and treated. Okay. What about uh, home remedies? Maybe something we have around the house that might help? Absolutely. Um, you know, a hot steamy shower is always a great idea. Um, you know, uh, that, that warm, moist air is very soothing. It helps mucus drain. Um, if you don't want to get in the shower, you can also do the thing where you kind of drape a towel over your head, over a, a bowl of hot water and breathe in the fumes. Um, and then staying hydrated, um, you know, staying hydrated, always a really good idea um, with, with respect to sort of um, nasal problems. You want to focus on maybe those hot or um, room temperature drinks, hot drinks, um, kind of tend to provide more relief than cold. Although, you know, drinking any fluids are good. <laughs> um, and, you know, thinking about not just, you know, maybe hot tea, but also hot chicken soup, those kinds of things can be really soothing. Um, another thing to think about is, um, spicy food. So the capsaicin in chili peppers um, has been shown in some contexts to be useful for, for nasal congestion. And I think we've all kind of had that experience, right? Where you eat spicy food and feel like your, your, uh, your, your sinuses are being cleared. Um, so, you know, you can embrace that. Mm -hmm. um, and then a humidifier is also a really good option. Dry air can be irritating and, and inflame the nasal lining. So a, humid a humidifier, you want to go for a cool mist humidifier and set it to about 30 to 50% humidity. Um, that can really um, um, help, you know, uh, address that dry air in your home. And you can always go to CR.org to check out our humidifier ratings. All right. Oh, a lot of options there. Yeah, yeah, you do have a lot of, there's a lot of flexibility and, and ways to kind of help yourself. <laughs> well, that's good at this time of year. Thank you, Catherine All Roberts. Right. Yeah, Catherine Roberts from Consumer Reports. Have a good rest of your day. Thank you, you too. Appreciate it. All right, let's go outside with live cam. Uh, dry air, not around here yet. No. But it's going to move in behind this Oh, yeah. Strong cold front. Somewhat, somewhat, yeah. We'll see some, uh, we, we could see the hours and change a little bit. But by the way, I didn't know we had so much slow-mo video of people blowing their nose. Pretty impressive. <laughs> uh, yeah, You're welcome, good, buddy. <laughs> good information. Uh, let's take a look at the pollen count real quick. Uh, speaking of allergies, where are we at? Molds are low. Fall elm, pigweed, grass, and ragweed are all low. Uh, so we don't have a lot of issues. We'll see what this front does for allergens, and we'll see what it does for our trees too. Take a look at this picture. You know, the Guadalupe River, Bergheim, wow. Trees are finally starting to change, and we're getting word out at Lost Maples that there hasn't been a lot of changes yet, but it could be on the horizon here very soon. Of course, it's booking up very quickly. You gotta book a day pass there at Lost Maples, but something you may wanna check out. It's a great time of year, uh, especially with these fronts coming through. So let's take a look at the details on the front one more time for tomorrow. Uh, it arrives between 7 to 9 a.m. in the Hill Country, 10 to noon time here in San Antonio, 1 to 3 along the coast. It'll be windy. It'll cool down. You'll see temperatures in the 70s here midday in San Antonio falling to the 60s by the afternoon. And we've got a good chance of rain uh, with that front. Again, this is tomorrow we're talking about. More on that front. More on the extended chances uh, for rain, too, coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Checking Transcat, we've got one incident to show you, and it's at southbound 1604 at 90 
We've got two lanes blocked due to a minor accident in that area. And in your morning headlines, it seems that more people are dipping into their retirement fund, nest eggs to help pay the bills. That's according to a report from Bank of America. They say the number of its 401k plan participants pulling cash out has increased by 27% since the first quarter of this year. The average withdrawal just over $5,000. Despite high gross domestic product numbers and low unemployment, Americans are still clearly facing a cash crunch caused by high inflation and rising costs of living. Walmart says it is making changes at stores in the U.S. to create a calmer experience for neurodiverse people with sensory disabilities. Now, starting Friday, the retail giant will have sensory-friendly hours from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. seven days a week. During those hours, stores will lower the store lights, turn off the radio, and set in-store TV walls to a static image. These measures are meant to provide a less stimulating environment for shoppers. And if you have any $2 bills laying around, they could be worth thousands. A $2 bill from 2003 with a very low serial number recently sold at auction for $2,400. U.S. currency auctions say that $2 bills are with a red seal can sell for three dollars to $2,500. And those with a brown or blue seal can sell for hundreds. You can find a complete list of the values of collectible $2 bills at US, uscurrencyauctions.com. Not bad. Time now, 9.38 and 70 degrees for now. You are watching GMSA at 9. Still to come, a look at our BGC Game of the Week between Veterans Memorial and Burbank in week one of the high school football playoffs. Welcome back. Let's look out there with Zoo Cam at our Flamingo friends who are enjoying the shade right now. But it's going to get cold, Flamingo, so get ready for tomorrow. <laughs> So what's our time frame tomorrow, Justin? Uh, we're thinking midday, uh, mid morning to midday is when it arrives here in San Antonio. And it's not it's not a huge cold front in the sense that it's going to get really, really cold. Right. But you will notice a cool down. It'll get windy and it'll get rainy. Maybe that's the biggest takeaway here is that we're going to get some good rain out of this. So we start uh, with a look across the country. Where is that front right now? It's starting to get its act together and drawing in some colder air in places like Denver and Wichita. You're noticing temperatures dropping there, 39 Denver, 51 Wichita. Hasn't quite made it to Texas yet, but it will. And we'll see numbers drop this afternoon in places like the Texas Panhandle, and then it will steadily make its way towards us by tomorrow. In the meantime, today's kind of our last warm day. It's still going to be pretty toasty. So let's time out the front for you. We'll go ahead and fast forward to 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. It'll be quiet until then. We may start to see a few showers at that point, although the bulk of the action is going to be to our north and west. Again, front arrives around midday right along the front. We could see some showers and storms, uh, briefly at least, and then once the front passes through, it turns windy, and you'll start to see showers developing, especially as we get into Thursday night and early, early on Friday morning. I think we'll see some pretty widespread rain. Uh, some places could see some good numbers. I don't think it's going to be just uh, heavy rain. Flooding is not going to be a big issue here, I don't think, uh, but maybe just a steady rain, which we could certainly deal with. And then by Friday morning, uh, especially around the morning commute, still a few showers lingering, but the heavier rain would start to move away. Uh, so I'll warn you that tomorrow evening's commute and then Thursday morning, uh, we need to watch uh, for, I'm sorry, Friday morning, we'll need to watch for potential some wet roads. Uh, temperature trend tomorrow, we warm to about 74 at midday and then the temperatures fall off. Again, it's not a huge cold, uh, cool, uh, cold front in the sense that it's gonna be really chilly, but we will drop down into the low 60s and with a gusty north wind, you'll feel it. Uh, gusts tomorrow could be around 30 to maybe 35 in some cases by the late afternoon and evening hours. Now let's talk about today. We've got the temperatures right now at 70. A little bit of drizzle reported at the airport with some light fog. South southwesterly winds at about 11 miles per hour. And you can see the cloud cover. Some of that fog as well starting to erode from southeast to northwest. So I think eventually the sun does pop out, but you'll have to give it another couple of hours here in San Antonio. 74 Gonzales, 69 Hondo, 69 in Kerrville, and again right around 70 here in San Antonio. Our forecast today, noontime 78, 81 at 1 o'clock, partly cloudy this afternoon at 84. Then we see the clouds build back in tonight, and as we showed you, tomorrow will be uh, somewhat of an active day. Rain chances, highest Thursday night. We'll keep some in Friday morning. Slight chance Saturday. Uh, we up the chances again Sunday evening. And then again Monday, we have some good chances for at least some light rain. So it's an active pattern here. 74 tomorrow before the front hits. 
and then temperatures falling. 60 on Friday will be a cool, cloudy day. A uh, slight chance Saturday, as we said, and then still cloudy and cool even through early next week. Thank you, Justin. The regular high school football season is over, and now it is time for the playoffs. All right, Max is back with a look at one of the big games we're watching this week. Good morning again. Good morning, guys. So Justin kind of stole my thunder, pun intended, because, yeah, he alluded to high school football. Well, postseason starting this weekend, and for a lot of people, it's going to be a little cold out there. It's going to feel like actual football. So the big game that we're watching in our big game playoff coverage this week, Burbank Bulldogs. And Veterans Memorial Patriots Class 5A Division 2B1 matchup. Take a look. Bulldogs finished the regular season 9-1 overall, 8-1 in District 14-5A2 with their only loss coming to Alamo Heights, who won District with a perfect season. Now Burbank, led by head coach Michael Mall, and this year's squad is just the third in school history to win nine games in a single season. Now they want to beat the Patriots and move on to the next round. It's very special, you know, new coaching staff and new players, you know, just trying to adjust and just transition into a better program and instead of like a dynasty and a legacy, it's very special and yeah, I just can't wait to, you know, win a playoff game. A uh, very special season. I know it's a very special season for my seniors. Um, that's why we tried our hardest in going 9-1 and one. and this playoff one, we got to get this playoff one. So. Uh, it's very special, you know, this school doesn't really see that much success and it's very nice to do something like that for this school. I'm as excited as can be. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't wait to get out here this morning. I feel like they're going to feel the same way. Uh, got a couple text messages yesterday on a Sunday from kids and stuff. So I know that they're thinking about it all last night. All right. So on the other side, Veterans Memorial High School Patriots also getting ready for their first round playoff matchup with Burbank. The Pats finishing the regular season six and four overall, four and two in district, 13-5A2. Good for second place behind the Warriors. Now the Patriots, who finished the regular season on a two-game win streak, they know the Bulldogs are good. They're not taking this week off, and they're not making taking play, making the playoffs for granted. This is a special moment. Everyone dreams about being uh, in the playoffs. You know, some people had, had to turn their pads today, and uh, we're just thankful to be out here uh, practicing another week. I find it to be like, I feel like it's a reward for our hard work. Uh, not many people can say they've been to the playoffs or uh, have to put up their pads this week because uh, they didn't make it, and we were fortunate to be able to be at this position, and we're just working hard right now, trying to get better for the playoffs. Well, the, the message we're sending our guys is to enjoy the moment, uh, take advantage of every opportunity to get better because not everybody gets to do uh, what we're getting to do today, and that's practice football and get ready for a big playoff game. Just one play at a time. Here's a look at our BGC Game of the Week Veterans Memorial at Burbank Friday night, 7 o'clock, the SAISD Sports Complex. From high school football to professional basketball. Spurs game tonight. Spurs next tip off 6:30 Madison Square Garden. Guys, I can feel it in the air. There's winning in the air. Three and four. Wemby's coming off some less than stellar performances. Got to figure out the point guard situation. There's been some national criticism here and there, but the brightest stars shine under the brightest lights. I don't know if there's any lights brighter than Madison Square Garden. So cautious optimism. Yeah. We get back on track. We are optimistic. Yeah, that sounds good, Max. We, we like that. I'm also not here tomorrow if I'm wrong, so. <laughs> Duly noted. Yeah. yeah, you're good. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. Spurs go. go. Thank you, Max. Right now, 949, 70 degrees. It's a big night for country music. When we come back, a look at who's performing and making special appearances at the 57th Annual Country Music Awards. Hi, welcome back. It's 952. So it's the biggest night in country music. Several performers are getting ready for the 57th annual CMA Awards in Nashville. Airy tonight right here on KSET 12. ABC's Morgan Norwood tells us more about the all-star performers, nominees, and special guests. Reunited and it feels so good, guys. Yeah, it does feel good. We and they're back. Luke Bryan and Peyton Manning. This is the Super Bowl of country music. Yep. Preparing to take center stage on country music's biggest night. Luke Bryan, a candidate who will never plead the fifth, but he will drink a fifth. Hosting the CMA Awards together for the second year in a row, taking us backstage during a last minute rehearsal. The rehearsal was good, you know, we're still testing things. Um, for some reason, Luke has this idea, he thinks I should sing a song or a verse tomorrow, which yeah, yeah. I, I'm trying to figure out what 
I mean, all my all Why my years, such a good idea? I, all my years on Idol, I, I, I know a it just you know a talent I know, when I know you see a voice. it, Peyton. Seriously, because I've seen you, um, Brad Paisley, and you have a commercial together. Business life retirement. Or nationwide's there to protect. Uh, maybe leave the songs to me. You actually do have a pretty good voice. No, do not. I do not. Peace. I do not. I, yes. I, I know the words. The effort is there, the, the execution no, is not. You, you kept and the so, melody. It's called editing. How are you handling, not only this is your third year, your second with this guy, right. but you're also performing not just one song, but a medley of your greatest. But I got a beer in my hand. Country girl, shake it for me. Girl, one margarita, two margarita, three margarita shot. Well, and, and it's funny, in the early years, I think you're so stressed about everything going on uh, your voice but now it's nice to have several of these behind me and just like at the end of the day i know i know everything's going to be okay yeah it's pretty cool though he, he's very humble and the fact that he's getting to perform this medley of his 30 number one hits that, that's pretty powerful i mean 30 number one hits right? are, I mean, you, are you going to be okay with that well i can't do all 30 <laughs> What? Medley, that I can't. Was, no. So we took, told me that promised. was the deal. We took snippets of some of the 30. I need you guys to make a pit stop right over here. Peyton doesn't know, but I adopted these for his family. So these puppies are from Wags and Walks. So they're bringing puppies for the artists, for the hosts to, to cuddle with, to get rid of nerves. You need, you need, you need this. Is this working? I, I, I needed this. During my you first need, CMA, need both I need both of these. It would have calmed my nerves <laughs> on my first CMA performance. Are you going to fangirl uh, when anybody takes the stage in particular? You know, last year I hosted, and she was here and up for awards. She was up for six last year, nine right. this year, and Luke never introduced me to Lainey Wilson. What? Oh, have mercy on me. That's the person I'd like to meet. I'm a fan. Yeah. I'm, I'm not afraid to. Uh, she's she's admit the most that, nominated so. artist. You think you might right. help him out I'll, and uh, introduce him to Lainey? I will. Uh, we'll start making the proper calls. I'll send some emails <laughs> out. All right. I know they're calling you. You got to get to rehearsal. Uh. And tomorrow night, if Luke gets a little chatty on stage, legendary QB Peyton is ready to make the audible. Let's go. Let's go. Trips right. Set trips right. right. Luke, read the teleprompter <laughs> accurately and stand by the X's. On two, on two. Ready? And got it. Chris Spencer reporting. Yes, Qu quick check of weather. 84 degrees today. Uh, we'll get some good chances of rain tomorrow. Much cooler behind that front. Thank you, Justin. We'll be ready. Thanks for joining us today. Have a great one.